First time I got sent um, to cover the presidential campaign uh, for Rolling Stone, I was, it was in 2004, and um, I was on the I was on the plane with Kerry, you know, and it's teeming with journalists, obviously. And there was a story that came out. Probably everybody's forgotten it, but there was a there was a story that turned out to be fake that Matt Drudge put out about. Well, maybe it wasn't fake, but it was at least not proved um, that Kerry had a secret mistress in Africa, right? <laughs> and if you look this up, you'll 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 fi- you'll find stories about it that were out there. Um, and Kerry came out uh, in the morning, and all the journalists. We're, at, we're sort of peppering him with questions about the mistress. And, you know, I don't care about John Kerry, but I, I thought it was odd that they went straight from reading something that, where there's no evidence to posing this question and having it on camera, right? So I asked uh, some of the journalists, um, and I was kind of the new kid, I said, uh, what why were you doing that like like on the basis of what were you asking that question and the minute they perceived that i was actually trying to ask another journalist a question like for a story this one guy he sort of steps in front of all the other ones and he says dude this is a fucking no fly zone right like in other words you, we don't cover each other in here right like that's that that was the message and like from that point forward, I was I was always in the back of the plane, like with the tech people, whenever <laughs> whenever I uh, covered presidential politics, because the press does not like it. It, it even though it is crucial a crucial part of the story, it it denies that it has that role and it insists on not being covered. And you can see how nervous these these guys get. Yeah, when a camera's on them, like, oh my, you're putting a camera on me? Like, uh, when I Google John Kerry secret mistress Africa, it brings me down a John Edwards hole, which is fucking weird. That is bizarre. but uh, when you put it into Bing, I get a story. Oh, uh, so Microsoft won't censor it, <laughs> but Google <laughs> yeah, will. Like, there was more. There's a couple of stories about that. Like John Kerry stuff comes up when I look at that. Different John Kerry stuff. Yeah, yeah. Where it doesn't redirect to John Edwards, you know. So like, that's even weir- that's yeah, even weirder, kind of strange, right? Yeah. Like, like <clears throat> you're getting different versions of reality based on what search engine. You're well, using? you most certainly do. If you use DuckDuckGo, you just get what's out there. And right. when you use Google, you get really – like I noticed that during the pandemic. There was a doctor that had a heart attack immediately after taking his uh, second shot of – I think it was Moderna. And so I was like, what is that about? And this was like very early on. And uh, I Googled it. I could not find it. I could not find the story. And then I went to DuckDuckGo immediately. Huh. And I was like, Whoa. This is wild. Like, they're hiding this story. Right. So they would hide certain stories because they thought that they would increase vaccine hesitancy. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's... It's terrifying. Right. You're, yeah, you're, holding, no. you're carrying water for the pharmaceutical companies, which is really spooky. Because, I mean, you want to talk about the people that have had, like, the biggest criminal fines in U.S. history. And they've been lying about the adverse effects of their medications forever. Right. Uh, withholding information in order to gain a profit. And then you're hiding stories, right? That may implicate them in someone's death. It might, it might be somehow or another involved. Like we don't know, and you're just hiding it. Why are you hiding that story? I googled Florida doctor adverse reaction vaccine heart attack instantly on Bing, on uh, DuckDuckGo. I get all these articles huh. about this guy that died. Couldn't find shit on Google. Wow. Well, I mean, look. Th- th- They've gotten very sophisticated in their ability to suppress certain things, you know. Yeah. I mean, and and you know, you, you this this is very where you see the influence of, you know, how money works with the uh, content suppression thing. I mean, like you take something like the D- Digital Forensic Research Lab for the Atlantic Council. It's it's one of the things that they that these uh, platforms use to decide whether or not a news story is true. But if you look if you look at where they get their money, you know it's the German Marshall Fund, which is a mishmash of um, sort of 
sovereign wealth funds and you know you know fortune 500 companies so it's it's you're paying for the fact check essentially right like the, like that's how yeah. all all of these sites that are allegedly deciding what's true and what's not uh, they're all influenced, you know, um, and uh, that that's that's another thing that drives me crazy is this uh, this persistent belief that people have that you can objectively decide what is true and what what is not somehow. Um, it doesn't work like that. The way the, the way it, the only way it works is you either over time you come to to trust some stations over others because they have a record of being more right about something like that's yeah. that's the only way it works yeah independent fact checkers when the independent fact checkers review certain things and you find them on social media where they have like little little warning or a little notification afterwards and you actually go down the rabbit hole and say well what have you done like what is the in- a lot of it is subjective They've just decided that this is not true or decided this is partially true. Or it's missing context. That's yeah. their favorite thing. Yeah. Missing, missing context missing is great. Missing context, right? Like, oh, it, it's true, but here are eight reasons why you should think otherwise. Like, you know, like that's not our job, you know. It, and by the way, reporting by itself is fact-checking. That's the whole point of it. Like, we don't, we don't need a separate thing called fact-checking, yeah. right, to go with report out. I, I, that that whole f- phenomenon drives me nuts. But. It is. It's weird though that we don't have. I mean, it used to be Snopes, and a lot of people used to go to Snopes. But then, I read about Snopes, and you f- you find out all the the wacky shit about the people that are involved in Snopes, and that the the guy who's the head of it is like uh, very heavily left leaning, and then he married a prostitute, and like. All kinds of wild shit. It's like Snopes is not like some uh, like rock solid, independent, purely objective organization that is dedicated to the dissemination of truthful information. Like no, they're they're like fucking heavily left leaning. Right, right. And yeah. in subjective circumstances, when it's subjective whether or not this is real or not real or lacking context or whatever, like they can give they can paint a narrative that it, at least is biased. I mean. I, I, Every outlet is subjective, but that's why you have to allow them all. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You, like, we're, we're grown-ups. We let's read all the stuff, and then we'll, we'll decide. You know? Yeah. Uh, and-